Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have square root of x plus 4 over x equals x minus 2 over square root of x. And we're going to evaluate x squared minus 5x. In some cases we can find this directly. Sometimes we can solve for x and just plug it in. So I'll be presenting three methods even though uh, the first one or the third one I'm not going to finish completely. And let's start with the third method. Okay, so third method first. So here's my third method. We have, let's make a common denominator, but let me rewrite the original problem first. So this is our equation. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by square root of x. If you do that, we're going to get, uh, you know, something interesting. Let's go ahead and distribute. Uh, square root of x is going to cancel out on the right hand side. And the left hand side is going to give us x plus 4 over square root of x equals x square root of x minus 2. And then basically we can go ahead and make a common uh, denominator here. x square root of x plus 4. And then multiply the square root of x by the right hand side. Like this. Distribute. And this gives us x squared of x plus 4 equals x times x, which is x squared minus 2 times the square root of x. And then you can go ahead and square both sides and get rid of some of the radicals and keep doing it uh, until you get something nicer. You know, but this is not going to turn out to be very nice. That's why it's the third method. But I wanted to do it first. Get it out of the way. Anyways, so if you do the squaring both sides, you're going to get something like this, which is very messy. And then you can kind of put everything on the same side that doesn't contain a radical as opposed to something that contains radicals. And you're going to get something like this. And then you can square both sides and so on and so forth. Right. So that's going to be, yes, super duper messy. Uh, and this is probably and I don't know why I'm cubing that square both sides and, you know, you can do it. Right. OK. This is quite complicated or messy. So we don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look at another method, which is going to be our first method. I'm going to do first method next and the second method last. So for my first method, and again, uh, as always, I'm going to rewrite the original problem so you can get to see it. X is positive. Don't forget that right at the end. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by X this time. X root X plus 4 equals X squared minus 2 times square root of X. Kind of makes sense, right? Okay, let's go ahead and put um, the radicals on the same side, obviously, and then I can write it this way. And then square both sides. Okay, this makes sense, right? I mean, we have radicals on the left and non-radicals on the right, so let's make sure uh, we get rid of all the radicals. So if you square x root x, hmm, that gives us x squared times x, because square root of x squared is x, right? And x squared is x squared. So this gives us x cubed. In other words, this is also very helpful with some factoring and algebra problems. Square root of x cubed can be written as x root x. Obviously, you want x to be positive in this case. Otherwise, this doesn't work. Okay, so when you square that, I'm going to get x cubed. Plus 2ab, 2 times 2 is 4. x root x times root x is x times x, which is x squared. Plus, if you square 4, if you square 2 times square root of x, you're going to get 4x. I know this kind of looks messy because I didn't take out the square root and there's a purpose. Well, I did not purpose. Anyway, so this gives us x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 16. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but uh, at least it's polynomial. Let's put everything on the same side. x to the fourth minus x cubed and then negative 8 plus negative 4 is negative 12. x squared minus 4x plus 16 is equal to 0. Awesome. This is a polynomial equation. Hopefully we have some integer or rational roots. And if we do, obviously they need to be integers because that's monic. Uh, we, the coefficient of x to the fourth is 1. So we're going to be looking at uh, divisors of 16. There's quite a few of them. It's 2 to the fourth power. So we have 5 positive divisors and 5 negative divisors, including 1 and negative 1. And we can test all these out. You can use synthetic division. You can use whatever division. At the end, you're going to find that. But one of the things that's very helpful is always, always, always checking for the sum of the coefficients, right? 1 plus 16 is 17. If you subtract from that the negatives, you're going to get 0. So the sum of the coefficients 0 indicates that x equals 1 is a solution that is a good candidate. So to keep a long story short, 
This polynomial can be factored into the following. x minus 1 times x minus 4 times x plus 2 squared. Obviously, we do need a double root here because it's quartic, right? And from here, we get the following. Interesting results. x equals 1. As we said earlier, the sum of two coefficients gives us this, uh, this root automatically. x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. Okay, now... Let's take a look at each one of these solutions. Examine carefully because they may not always work, right? So what is the original problem? Let's go ahead and rewrite it one more time. The original equation is square root of x plus 4 over x equals x minus 2 over square root of x. And remember at the beginning we said something about x. We said that, hey, x needs to be positive because of square root of x. Therefore, x equals negative 2 is going to be disqualified. It just doesn't work. Too bad. What about the other ones? We can kind of test, right? I mean, we can go ahead and plug it in because squaring both sides introduces extraneous solutions, so on and so forth. If x is equal to 1, let's see what happens. 1 plus 4 over 1 and 1 minus 2 over 1. This gives us 1 plus 4, which is 5. This gives us 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Obviously, they're not equal. Too bad. It just didn't work. So x equals 1 doesn't work either. So we end up with x equals 4. Hopefully, that's a solution. Let's go ahead and test it out. Square root of 4 plus 4 over 4 equals 4 minus 2 over square root of 4. This is 2 plus 1, which is 3. This is 4 minus 1, which is 3. They are both equal to 3. We're all good. Awesome. So x equals 4 works. And yay, that is the only solution to this equation okay great so x equals 4 is valid it's good to go let's go ahead and evaluate x squared minus what was it 5x from here to evaluate that we're going to replace x with 4 4 squared minus 5 times 4 is 16 minus 20 and that is negative 4 so the answer is negative 4 x equals 4 but the answer is negative 4 great let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now and then we're going to finalize our video. Okay. So here's the second method. The second method actually uses a really cool trick. And you could also kind of use that with the first method. But I just didn't want to give it away. I'm going to go ahead and put the radicals on the same side. Without making a common denominator, of course. So it's going to look like this. And it's kind of hard to see. But if you look at this very carefully, look very hard. You should notice that uh, the right-hand side can be factored by difference of two squares. I know it's kind of forceful, but here's the thing. We can think of this as square root of x squared, and we can think of this as 2 over square root of x squared. And guess what? We have them on the left-hand side. Awesome. So we can kind of write this as square root of x plus 2 over square root of x times square root of x minus 2 over square root of x by using difference of two squares. These two cancel out, leaving us a 1. So square root of x minus 2 over square root of x equals 1. If you make a common denominator or whatever, you'll get x minus 2 equals square root of x. If you replace square root of x with t, you get t squared minus 2 equals t. t squared minus t minus 2 equals 0. From here, t equals 2 or t equals negative 1. But t is positive, so this doesn't work. t equals 2 indicates x equals 4. And that just means x squared minus 5x is equal to negative 4. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to watch the shorts. And bye-bye.